Hello, this is the next video in a playlist and I'm calling Hypothesis Testing. And here we're going to look at a two-sided, uniformly most powerful, unbiased test for the variance of a normal distribution with known mean equal to zero. The test we're going to look at is the variance sigma squared equal to some value sigma naught squared, or is it not equal to that value? And a must watch is the previous video where we derive the critical regions theoretically and, and we derive the equations and in this video we're going to use R to solve for the critical regions for this uniformly most powerful unbiased test. And so first let's remove the objects from R and we're going to assume that sigma naught squared is 11. We're going to have a sample size of 55, alpha 0 0.05 and now we want to set up the equations. In the previous video we derived the uh, expressions needed for these. And there were two criteria. The first one was the expected value of the test function was alpha. And then the second one was the test statistic times the, the expected value of our test statistic times the test function had to equal something. So there's two conditions. And so what I want to do, really the, you know, the, <laughs> to solve this is one or two lines. And so I'm going to develop a a little bit to give a better understanding of where that equation comes from. So in the first expression where the test function has to equal alpha, it could be that the left tail is really small and the right tail is really big. Well what I do is I go through all possible combinations of having the you know the left tail from 0 0.001 to something really close to to 0 0.05. And then if the left tail is small, the right tail is big, you know, but the total has to be alpha. And so the C1 and C2 find all possible solutions for that first criteria. C1 is the left critical region, the point, and the C2 is the point that starts the right critical region. So we find those. And then there was a second equation that criteria that the test function had to meet. And then we go through all possible solutions for it, and that's what the C1B and C2B, those stand for the, you know, the left critical region, the right critical regions, you know, all possible solutions. So what I do is I plot those, and we look at those. And so the black line is the first criteria of all possible solutions, and the red line is the all possible solutions of the second criteria. Now the test function has to satisfy both of these simultaneously, and then we're looking for that intersection point right there. You know, so the test, you know, we'll have a cutoff around 37 and, you know, whatever that value is. And what I do is I set up a function that when I plug in a C1 value, say 32, and I plug it into this equation and this equation. I look at the difference of those. And if it's zero, we found a point. If it's not, then we keep solution, keep uh, searching. And so it it hones in on that value, you know, where the difference is zero. And that's where the uh, function comes into play. And so that's what this function is, is we're looking at the difference of those two lines for all possible C1 values. And then I just use Uniroot to find it. And Uniroot is so fast, and I've used it over and over in these uh, videos. So what we have found is the C1 that makes the difference to those functions zero. Then we have to take it, take C1, and plug it back into those, you know, one of the equations to find C2. And that's what we do here. And so we plot them, first of all. So the C1 prime and the C2 prime are the 36 and 78. But remember that is where we've divided everything by the, um, the sigma naught variance. So if we want to go back to what I'm going to call the original test function, C1 and C2, then you have to multiply C1 prime and C2 prime by sigma naught squared. And that's what we get. Now what did we just solve for? with a picture. Remember the the black, red and black lines or the two equations and we have found the point that satisfies both of those equations. So let's look at a power function for this situation and basically we 
we look at the difference but we cycle through all possible variances that could have you know could be and we plot it and so that's what we do here so this is the power function for this uniformly most powerful and biased test notice the the no hypothesis was that the variance was 11 versus not equal 11 and the dotted line is alpha and so it looks like everything you know this power function is above the line for all possible values so that's what makes it unbiased and so this is the variance so now let's run a little computer simulation with the situation we have we're testing is the variance 11 versus not 11 here we're going to assume the true variance is 11 we're going to simulate you know normal random variables with mean 0 and uh, variance of 7 as opposed to 11 and we'll see what the power is now we put everything in a big matrix where the number of rows equals the simulations or the loops number of columns equal the sample size and then once we put that out we do row sums the sums of the x squared so that's our test statistic we find out how many times we're in the ejection region and we table it and that's what we get here then it, while that runs I'm going to also um, oh there it is so that we have a power of uh, 63 percent now we're going to plot that to see what just happened so we assume you know this is the power function for our situation we assume the true variance was 7 and we simulated a value of 60.63 and look it's it's right on the power curve so the theoretical power curve and the simulated values are just spot on now let's look at the equal tail test which is probably more used more often used that's where the left tail critical region has a alpha over 2 and the right tail has a critical region of alpha over 2 and we plot them now let's let's um, then plot all this on a on a uh, chi-square curve and see really what's going on so this is the chi-square distribution under the null hypothesis and the black lines are the UMP test so those cutoff values give us the uniformly most powerful unbiased test the, the red lines are the equal tail approximately uniformly powerful most unbiased test notice that the difference here is less than the difference here um, but the total area of course is still alpha when the null hypothesis is true but the curve is steeper here and it's flatter here so you have to you know you, the difference has to be bigger to sort of have the same effect over here but those are the critical regions and what I want to do is find a uh, create a power curve for the equal tail test and that's what this is and we're going to plot them on top of each other to see what the differences are so here it is from a, a high level you know view so we go from 0 to 20 and the black is the uniformly most powerful unbiased test for this situation and the red is the equal tail test and they look very very similar very small differences at this point at this kind of big level big view they both look unbiased but let's zoom in a little bit we're going to zoom in we, there we went from 0 to 20 here we're going to go from 10 to 12 and see where what it looks like you, you can kind of see the you can see the bigger differences but remember that's still a really small difference we're just zooming in so far and look at the red line it goes below the alpha level in the alternative region so it's not unbiased anymore let's zoom in one more time and this and then that's the last view we'll do for this video so we zoom in one more time to really highlight that it does go below the alpha level in the alternative region so it's not unbiased and remember these differences while they look quite big in this zoomed in view they're not and so they're approximately you know close and that's it well this is the uh, two-sided uniformly most powerful and biased test for testing a variance of a normal distribution with known mean to be zero hope you enjoyed this i sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye